Well, good afternoon to you. Trucker Todd here and time for another video. All right, folks. It's a question that I know I've answered at least two or three times since I've been here in Swift. But it's a question that comes up over and over and I guess we're going to have to approach it a different way because people still aren't getting it. Of course, I'm talking about home time at Swift. So in this video, once again, we're going to talk about home time. I'm going to tell you what I do, how I do it, and uh, my recommendation on how you should do it. But before I do, uh, the YouTube analytics tells me that only about one in four of you are actually subscribed to my channel that are watching me. Now, while I appreciate everybody watching, you guys could do me a solid favor by just clicking that subscribe button waiting a few sec seconds, clicking that bell, and then selecting all. That way you uh, receive notifications when future videos come out. And it also places me higher in the YouTube algorithms so that more people see this video. There's a lot of other ways you can help the channel, super thanks and stuff like that. It's all right below this video. A lot of it's in the description. Check that stuff out. Uh, give me a thumbs up, all that good stuff. My Instagram's there, my Facebook's there, all that stuff. So you guys, uh, if you would take a few seconds to do that, either during this video or right after this video, I'd really appreciate it. But uh, let's not waste any more time. Let's fire up the music and get into today's topic. Here we go. And this is why I do this, why I'm out here, why I keep that hammer down. Flying by these road signs with home on my mind but these wheels turning round For my family and for my kids For this life I want to live And this is why I do Alrighty, we're back. So... I want to talk about home time specifically here at Swift Transportation. And uh, I think it's important that we cover a few things. You need to have realistic expectations. And what do I mean by that? I'm not even joking. I've got guys that message me and say, hey, can I, can I work four days a week and make 4,000 a week? Yeah, if you haul something illegal, drugs, uh, humans, something like that, yeah, you can do that. But um, it's not realistic you know you're starting a business and I guess that's the part maybe we do need an AB5 law I don't know because guys don't don't get that they're starting a business you don't start a business by say, saying how little can I work how little can I do most uh, I, I go to restaurants a lot because I'm familiar with that most restaurant owners when they first open a business the first five years of the restaurant they're working 80, 90 hours a week. And some of you guys are like, hey, can I work three days a week? Uh, I had one guy ask me if he could work every other day. Almost everybody says, can I have every weekend off? And the answer is maybe. Uh, if you live in the right area, you might get a dedicated run. Uh, you might be in a high traffic volume area where, yeah, you could get home every weekend or almost every other weekend or something like that. But you have to... Uh, you have to know where you live, you have to understand freight lanes, things like that. And if you're going into it saying, how little can I work? It's probably not gonna be a good fit for you. Now, Freightliner used to have a saying called, uh, it was kind of their motto for a few years. It was said, they said, run smarter. And I don't know, it may still be their motto. And that's really what you've got to do out here. You've got to run smarter. I, I hear guys, when they call me with financial problems, that's the first thing they say. I'm working hard, and I'm like, well, that's your first problem. You can be a great truck driver and be a horrible business owner, and you have to, you have to uh, learn how to manage yourself. Uh, you know, if your biggest concern is how fast your truck's going to go, with diesel prices, even though they're coming down as high as they are, that's probably not your best move. Slowing down being responsible. You don't need the company to tell you to go slower. You should be doing that on your own. And uh, every load I can go slow on, time permitting, I do. I do 60 or 62 miles an hour. And that's why I get over 9 miles a gallon where a lot of these guys are getting between 7 and 8. 
and you think, oh, that two miles a gallon doesn't matter, but right now it really adds up. Now, when diesel shoots back down to two dollars a gallon again, then no, it may not, and I may change my strategy then, but right now it makes sense to, to run it like a business, and that seems to be a hard thing to do. I had a guy ask me yesterday, uh, do I have to pay for maintenance? Yes, it's your truck. If your car at home breaks down, do you have to pay for maintenance on it? Yes, it's your car. It, uh, I don't, maybe AB5 is necessary because these guys don't realize they're starting a business and I blame, I'll be honest, I blame the companies for this because a lot of companies don't treat you like an owner operator. They do treat you like a glorified company driver. I was really surprised, I'll be honest with you, I'm super surprised at how much uh, Swift treat, treats you like an independent business owner, like a partner, not like it's not an employer-employee type relationship like there is at a lot of companies. Now, uh, you've heard me say in other videos, I had a lot of freedom at DART, but the safety department and the maintenance department a lot of times made you feel like a... Uh, like a company driver. There was a lot of micromanagement in the safety department and in the shop. And uh, you don't get that here at Swift. And you want to know the ironic thing about that? Swift is less restrictive, but yet their safety score is better. <laughs> Go figure that. Now, you know, it. Uh, all these cameras and all this micromanagement stuff that's in trucks now, and mine doesn't have a camera, by the way. Well, it does. It has my personal one, but anyway. All of that stuff, you know, 10 years ago wasn't there. How did we ever deliver loads without fleet managers calling us and saying, hey, get up, you've had your 10 hour break, you need to be driving, uh, which I could name you a couple of companies that do that. How did we ever manage without, you know, tracking software? Well, it's people responsible and they delivered their own loads and they did what they needed to do. And now uh, guys are, I don't know about this generation. I know every generation complains about the generation after them, but they don't seem self-disciplined enough to manage themselves. And I said all that, some of you think that's filler, but I said all of that about self-management because that's how home time works. You are an independent contractor. It's your business. You can go home whenever you want. I know guys here that's taken three months off but you have to remember that truck payment and that insurance come out every week. And so those guys would either prepay for that three months or they would uh, pay it weekly. They'd call in every week with a credit card, pay it. And uh, so they planned for it. How do I do my home time? Uh, so far, the longest I've taken about, about taking off is about seven or eight days. Well, the way I do it, Swift pays weekly. So the way I do it is I try to divide my home time where two or three days of it's on one pay period, two or three days of it's on another pay period. I've learned uh, that, you know, through the weeks that I've been here, that my break even points somewhere around $1,100 and $1,300. I'm, I'm sorry, miles. So I make sure I've got at least 1,300 miles in that pay period. I know I'll get a small check and I can go home, not worry about being in the hole, stay as long as I want. Now, that next pay period though, I know I've got to have 11 to 1300 miles uh, so that everything is covered. And uh, so that's uh, a lot of you are going, wow, that much? Trust me guys, there's companies out there where you've got to have 2200 miles a week to break even. And uh, so, the 11 to 1300 I was running the numbers with a guy yesterday and uh, he was looking at another company and he was he said man Swift's expenses are about half of that other company and I'm like yeah that's what I'm trying to tell you it's uh it's not just the rate per mile you get it's the expenses it's everything it's the freight network um, if you're able to utilize your clock better because you can T-call loads and terminals because they've got terminals everywhere. It's uh, They have a lot of things in place that really help you maximize your profit. Now, some of you have really beat me up for coming here. Does that mean that I intend to work here for the next 30 years? Well, who knows? Let's see what happens in the market. 
I'm not saying this is the answer for the rest of your life. I'm saying this is the best option I can think of for at least the next three to four years. At three to four years, we'll reevaluate. Maybe something else looks better. Uh, any of these companies could have a change in leadership and it could become a totally different company and a place that you don't need to work. And so I, I, I'm not gonna make a long-term commitment. That's why I like the walk away lease. Uh, I actually read my lease and that's another thing I wanna touch on just really quick with you guys. You guys have got to, got to read your lease. I'm still having guys call me with super basic questions that are covered in the lease. Is this reimbursable? Is that reimbursable? Can I do this? Can I do that? And I'm like, please, please, if you don't do anything else I say, no matter what company you're at, read your lease. Now, I'll tell you this about Swift, and then we're going to wrap this up. I've read their lease three times now, and uh, occasionally when I'm sitting around with a little time on my hands, I'll read it again at some point, because it's not that there's a gotcha moment in there, it's that you need to know what you're getting yourself into, what's reimbursed, what's not, how things are calculated, things like that. I'm just amazed, it really shocks me at how many people won't read their lease but yet they want to come out here and call themselves a, a business owner, an independent contractor, an owner operator, whatever you want to call yourself. Um, and we've had that debate and some of you see it my way and some of you will never see it my way and that's okay. Uh, one guy got so mad at me that uh, he tried to get me, uh, get my contract broke with Swift. I thought that was a little extreme. But uh, anyway, you guys already know about that. We're not gonna refry the same tortillas you guys already know about that so anyway I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up I hope I've clarified things for you a little bit if you got any questions email me shoot me a comment below and I try to answer everybody and get back to them as quick as I can and uh, so you guys have a great day uh, we'll see you either Thursday or Friday with something else and y'all take care bye bye